Concave, convex inflection points. Let's take a look at concavity and how we can answer a question like this, which is a typical five mark question. So it says, show for x being between zero and pi that this function is convex in the interval between pi over three and two pi over three. So let's first discuss what it means for a graph to be convex, concave, or even have an inflection point. So I'm just going to draw a random cubic here. That looks like this. Now, what does it mean for a function to be concave? Now, the first way that I remember this is for convex, convex, you're looking for V shape, V shape. Yeah, V shape here means con convex, okay? So this kind of minimum point. So minimums, yeah? So when you see minimums, we're thinking convex, which must mean the other side is concave. How do I remember that it's concave? I think of it like this. It's coming up, 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 and then it's gonna cave in. Yeah, so it's caving in, okay? So when we're thinking maximums, we're thinking concave. So as long as you guys remember convex, then congate, concave is very easy to remember, okay? So concave, concave, okay? So max. Now let's define those regions. What has to be true at those points? Now we could think of this in terms of gradients, okay? So I'm just gonna take a look at some of these points as we go along the curve. Okay, now we know the gradient of the curve at certain points is equal to the gradient of the tangent at those points. Now look at these lines, yeah? What is happening to the gradient as we go along? Are they getting bigger or smaller? Well, we can see it's becoming less steep and then it's eventually going to negative. So here is positive, they're getting less steep and then eventually becoming negative. So the gradients are getting smaller and that's very important in terms of our understanding. The gradients are getting smaller, which means the rate of change of the gradients is negative, meaning that they're getting smaller. We're subtracting from those gradients. Now, how do we define that? We're saying the rate of change, the rate of change of the gradients, which is dy by dx, is less than zero, okay? Is less than zero, okay? Uh, I'm not writing too much over here because I want to say something else later. Now, uh, just doing the multiplication here, d times d, d squared. And then dx times dx is dx squared is less than zero. So for concave, d2y by dx squared is less than zero. And you guys kind of already know this. You know at maximums, you know at maximums, the second derivative has to be less than zero. And by similar argument on the other side, you can see here that the tangents are all getting larger. So the gradients are getting larger, which means that the second derivative, the rate of change of the gradients has to be positive. Now, somewhere in between, something special happens. When we go from concave to convex, we have what's known as the inflection point. Which is when the second derivative is zero. Which is why when we define something to be an inflection point, you have to show that it changes in concavity going from negative to positive or from positive to negative, okay? Now another way you guys can think of this is imagine you're driving a car. I'm in my mom's car, brum brum. So if you're driving along here, you'll be turning your steering wheel to the right. Right, 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 right. Then over here, you're gonna be turning it left, 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 left. The inflection point is when your steering wheel is straight, okay? That's a nice way of thinking about this, okay? So these are our definitions. Now let's take a look at this question. Show that it's convex in this interval. Convex, second derivative, positive. Okay, so let's differentiate this. Okay, two x just differentiates to two, plus. Four is just a multiplier. How do you differentiate sine three x? Differentiate the angle. 3x differentiates to 3, 
sawing differentiates the cos, angle stays the same. So we just have 2 plus, what's that, 12 uh, cos 3x. Now that's just the first derivative. We're going to have to differentiate that again. So the 2 is going to go. Differentiate the angle first. Remember, 12 is just a multiplier. Uh, 3x just differentiates 3. Cos differentiates to minus sawing. Angle stays the same. Okay. Now, we want to know when that is bigger than 0. So here we get, what is that? 36 minus 36. Sawing 3x bigger than 0. Well... We're going to divide by minus 36, which is going to change the region to actually be less than 0. Now look at the region we're interested in. We're interested between 0 and pi. So we usually solve something like this equals 0, right? So what we could do is we could sketch the graph within this range. Now the first thing we're going to do, as we always do, is we're going to modify the range. So we're going to modify that range. We're going to get 0, 3x, and 3 pi. Now, I'm going to solve sine 3x equals 0 first, and then we're going to draw the graph and figure out the region that we're interested in. Okay, so it's for sine 3x equals 0. When you do inverse sine of 0, you just get 0. That's your primary value. Do you guys remember how to work out secondary value? We don't use the cast diagram. It's pi minus the primary, which is pi, which gives you my secondary value. Now, 0 is not in the range. Pi is in the range. Not to worry, once you have your primary and secondary value, you add in minus 2 pi to get other values in the range. Okay, we're going up to 3 pi. So I'm going to take my primary, I'm going to add 2 pi, which is 2 pi, which is in the range. Now if we do pi plus 2 pi, we're going to get 3 pi, which is not in the range. So my only solutions are x, so we have pi and 2 pi, but remember that was for 3x, we divide by... Three. Okay, let's take a look now. So, if you guys remember back to my lesson on sketching graphs in radians, okay, we're not actually not interested in this graph, we're interested in this. So, we draw the sine graph between 0 and 3 pi, and then we're just going to divide everything by 3 afterwards, because we know 3x divides all the x values by 3, but we draw within the modified range, and then we divide everything by 3. So, the sine graph here, that's to 2 pi. Yeah, so we got 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi will be one more. Okay? So we have 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. And then when we divide all of this by 3, when we divide all of this by 3, I'm just going to do it here. We're going to get pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and here we're just going to get pi. Okay? Now, we're only interested when the sine 3x graph is less than 0. So we can see that it's less than 0 in this region between pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, which is what they wanted us to show. Okay, So we're going to say sine 3x is less than 0 for x being between pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, um, which implies the region is pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And that is that. So that's a, that's a very complete way of doing this question. Yeah, guys? So now you know how to define your concave, convex, and inflection point. Remember, with an inflection point, if they ask you to show it's an inflection point, you have to show it's a change in the second derivative. Uh, and then we addressed a pretty important question. So guys, make sure you see this video as part of your playlist. But... If you learned something today, guys, I really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, then link is in the description. And if you want to submit your own questions for the community, the Lung Gang Reddit is linked below as well. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.